The legacy of the Old Crow Distillery begins with Dr. James Crow, the namesake of Old Crow Bourbon. Crow was born in 1779 in the Highland capital of Inverness, Scotland, and was raised in the world of Scotch whiskey. He attended the prestigious Edinburgh University, studied medicine and chemistry, completing his studies in 1822. He took his education and skills and ventured off to America, moving first to Philadelphia and then on to Kentucky in 1823. By 1835, Crow was working for Colonel Willis Field at his Greer's Creek Distillery, putting his chemist training to good use. He started to apply scientific methods to the production of bourbon whiskey, eventually being credited with standardizing the sour mash process for consistency. His idea where a portion of each mash, the setback, is added to the next mash, helping to kickstart fermentation. This method is still used to make whiskey all across the United States. Through his efforts, Crow is credited with turning bourbon making from an art into a science. He was able to create great tasting whiskey and replicate the process over and over again. Sometime after 1835, he had left Grier's Creek and moved to the old Oscar Pepper Distillery, which later became LeBro and Graham and is now the home of Woodford Reserve. He became a master distiller, and here Crow first produced his Old Crow brand of bourbon whiskey. After leaving the Old Oscar Pepper Distillery, he moved to the Johnson Distillery in Frankfort, Kentucky, where he worked until his death in 1856. His Old Crow brand rapidly gained national attention, becoming a favorite of Presidents Ulysses S. Grant and Andrew Jackson and other famous men like Henry Clay and Mark Twain. After his death, James Crow was succeeded by William F. Mitchell. Mitchell inherited not only Crow's job, but his notes. Using those notes, he was able to replicate most of Crow's bourbon distilling processes. He went to work for the newly formed Gaines, Berry & Co. in 1872. Construction on their new distillery, right next door to the Johnson Distillery, was completed in the 1880s. A notable employee at the distillery was one Colonel E.H. Taylor, who was considered to be the father of the modern bourbon industry. The bourbon produced at the new Gaines facility, using Crow's original recipe, was renamed Old Crow, and was produced there until Prohibition. In 1934, after Prohibition, the distillery and brand was purchased by National Distillers, which continued producing Old Crow throughout most of the 20th century. During the post-Prohibition years, Old Crow became one of the best-selling bourbons in the world, rivaling even Jim Beam. During and after World War II, unfortunately, National Distillers changed the Old Crow recipe and distilling process by focusing on industrial chemical distilling. This change resulted in a decline in reputation and ultimately in lowered sales for Old Crow. In the 1960s, National Distillers spent considerable amounts of money modernizing and refurbishing the aging distillery in an attempt to revive the label. By the late 1980s, however, Due to significant financial losses and continued slow nationwide sales of all bourbon, national distilleries sold the remaining interests, including the Old Crow label and distillery, to James B. Beam Distilling Company. Jim Beam wrapped up production at the facility, closing the doors almost overnight. 
The distillery fell into disrepair over the past 30 years, although they refurbished several buildings and used some of the on-site warehouses to age spirits. David Meyer acquired the abandoned distillery in December of 2013 in order to produce his own spirits on the grounds of the historic distillery. The newly renamed Glens Creek Distillery creates a new chapter in Old Crow's legacy.